Um, the summit in Lithuania was an historical summit. There were so many um, important agreements that the allies agreed, up, agreed upon, increasing defense spending, ramping up the production. We will come back later on the ramping up the production of military capabilities, but I'd like to ask your opinion on, have you seen a positive progression from in this, in this past 12, almost 12 months? And uh, what are possible speed bumps that are actually entering the process? Um, there, there's two things basically happening at the same time. So after Vilnius, uh, we are now looking at how can we make sure that all the decisions that the leaders took in Vilnius uh, are going to happen, that we make sure that these plans are executable, that we get more uh, military men and women, that they have a higher readiness, that we buy more capabilities that we need to be readier. That we're going to do more exercises against those new plans, that we uh, make sure the changes in command and control are there. Uh, so there's a lot of things to do to make sure that, that it will work as we planned, as we have planned. And that means a lot of investments, it, it, it means a lot of recruitment, it, lead, it means r retaining people, uh, it means maybe thinking about uh, conscription or reservists or mobilization. So there's a lot of things that is that is beyond the influence of the Ministry of Defense. It is a, it's a wider political discussion on what it means for a nation to be readier for deterring and defending against the two threats that we're facing, which is Russia and the terrorist groups. So that's where societal resilience comes into play and where we uh, have to do a lot of work. It's about military mobility to make sure that the things that come from the US and Canada uh, enter in a harbor and then are that we're able to transport them over roads and, uh, and, 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 and over through air and that there's less restrictions when we try to cross a border and all these things we talk about for seven, eight, nine years now in EU and NATO. There's a lot of talk, but there's not enough walk because there's still a lot of restrictions. So all these things is, is beyond the military, is beyond the Minister of Defense. And I think slowly, slowly, in my eyes sometimes too slowly, uh, there is the realization that we need to do this together and not that you only look at the Minister of Defense and the Chief of Defense and then say, why is it not happening? Because it's beyond their uh, reach, beyond their power. So I think slowly that is a realization is, 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 is growing, uh, but it's also about the defense uh, capacity, uh, as you said, and we're going to talk later about that, but all these things have an impact on, on what we need to achieve. So that's one. On the other side, there is the support for Ukraine that needs to continue. And to, uh, to tell, uh, I see you there with the, with, uh, uh, the, the, the Ukrainian uh, uh, lady. Um, I said it in Ukraine when I visited there in March in Kiev, and I said it, I will say it now again, the, uh, the yellow and the blue flag that Sweden has, of course, now in front of the NATO headquarters will not be the only uh, blue and yellow flag in front of the NATO headquarters. <laughs>